It feels like I say something along the lines of haven't seen you in a while in almost every video, but I promise that's over now. The holidays are done. I survived. Hopefully you survived. Hopefully we all survived. And now we're just ready to lock into the roller coaster that is 2021. Yay us. This video today is sponsored by Athletic Greens. Head down to my description to learn more or stay tuned for the very jazzy ad read we have. Now, if you didn't see the video title today, I am testing the cheapest espresso machine I could find on amazon.com. This thing was a whopping $29.99 USD and I thought I would give it a test so you don't have to, or maybe by this test, you'll be enticed to buy it. It's from a company, company called Amusa. I've actually seen them in stores before. They make small cookware and small appliances. Nothing against them, I think they make some really nice stuff, but I was a little skeptical by this. As you can see by the description on the front, it says that this machine pulls espresso at five bars of pressure, which is a little alarming. Espresso is traditionally pulled at nine bars of pressure, but as the back says, we can make cappuccinos, espressos, and coffee desserts. You probably know that I am completely down with all those things. And I love the idea of a $30 espresso machine that has a steam wand that actually kind of works. I've tried some mid to high end espresso machines machines in the past, home machines that is, that have some pretty wonky steam wands and they're always pretty finicky, so I'd be tickled if this one poured a really nice latte. We'll just have to see. Now, this is also a true unboxing. I gave no peeks to myself. I did not test this out beforehand. I set up my camera and I ended up with about two hours of footage, so this was a beast to edit. Anyways, when you open up the box, you're met with your machine body and then also a little separate cardboard kind of container nestled in there that will have your spare parts additionally that don't fit in the box in the machine as is. I hope that made sense. Anyways, as you can see, I pull out the machine body and there's the cardboard thing I was mentioning. I, I don't know if it's cardboard. I, I wanted to call it corrugated a second ago and then realized that's not at all what corrugated means. Anyways, it holds your border filter. This is a funky little thing that took me quite a while to realize how to use as you will see in a bit. After that, you also had a little scoop and you also had your, what they're calling your carafe, which is glass, by the way. The box and the Amazon listing advertised it as a glass carafe and it is indeed glass with a plastic handle, but nifty little lid, I thought that was quite cute. And the last thing that came with it was a coffee scoop. Okay, I gotta go pay some bills and I'll meet you back here in like two minutes, goodbye. I wanna say thank you to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video. Athletic Greens Ultimate Daily is an all-in-one supplement with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. It's an easy way to get a whole bundle of nutrition in just one scoop. Now, personally, I've always found it difficult to get all my nutrients, especially vitamin D, as I live in the cloudy state of Oregon, and I'll be totally honest, I probably spend way too much time indoors. Vitamin D is a rare commodity for me, and I probably should have been taking it a long time ago, but I never really found a method that stuck with me. However, Athletic Greens makes it incredibly easy for me to get my daily vitamin D in an efficient and tasty way. It takes less than a minute for me to make every morning, and I've been enjoying it before my coffee and breakfast each day. It's such an easy thing to integrate into my current morning routine, and it has a light, pleasant flavor that leaves me feeling both refreshed and like I've started my day off on the right foot. So with a single scoop and a few solid shakes, I'm able to get going with pre and probiotics for improved gut health, as well as an optimized ingredient selection that's made to increase the absorbable forms of each vitamin, mineral, and whole food sourced ingredient. So if you're someone like me who has had trouble sticking to good nutrition habits in the past, or maybe you're just looking to add additional support to your current routine, I definitely recommend checking out Athletic Greens. It's an easy way to get all your bases covered in one go without losing track of all your supplement bottles, like me. Click my link below to get Athletic Greens Immunity Bundle that comes with a one-year supply of vitamin D plus five individual travel packs for free with your purchase. This combo is a game changer for supporting your immune system, especially in the winter months. Athletic Greens is the quickest, easiest, and tastiest healthy habit to fill the nutritional gaps in my diet, and maybe your diet. Athletic Greens is available in the US, Canada, UK, and Europe. Click my link below to learn more and add Athletic Greens to your daily routine. Okay, let's get back to the video. Hey everyone, welcome back. Thank you for sticking around with me. Now, as I mentioned before, we have all of our additional parts out now. We have the porta filter, which has a basket that falls out very quickly. It's not held in by anything. All the surfaces are flat, so you can use this little like 
wedge thing to hold it in if you'd like. You also have your small plastic scoop for coffee. It is flat bottom for I don't know why, but I tried to figure it out. And you also have your glass carafe that has these three markings on the side. One of them appears to be the steam wand marking. One of them appears to be a two cup and one of them is a four cup. Now the box on this machine advertised giving four servings of espresso. So that's what I'm assuming the carafe markers are for, but I just kind of played around with it and figured it out as I went along because there weren't any clear instructions. Now on the side, you have this knob, which is your main method of controlling and it has three different functions. You have off in the center, you have your steam wand function and you have your brewing function. There's no real range to these. So you can't necessarily like adjust the pressure of your steam wand by twisting the knob to a certain point. It's just kind of on, off or brew. Now you also have markings for slotting in your portafilter, which is very nice. And then you have your wonky little steam wand on the side. I, I think it's very cute. It looks like it's wearing a hat and I love that. I expected it to move. It did not, it's very in place. So if you wanna use a larger pitcher, beware. You might have to dangle your pitcher off the side and plant around with the machine. Anyways, you also have your filter up top in your brew head and you have a drip tray that falls out. And apparently I was having trouble with basic shape recognition that day, but I ended up figuring out how to fit it back in and we're good to go that's nice to know i'm sure it's very easy to clean and that's about all the machine oh the last thing i forgot to mention is that that this top knob right here will screw off and that gives you access to your water tank i say that very loosely this doesn't have a very high capacity my understanding from reading the instructions is you basically just put in the amount of water you're planning to use for your single serving or a single brew time of coffee for example if you're making four servings of espresso you will put in the water necessary for just those four servings and you wouldn't necessarily leave any of that sitting in the machine when you were done now, I took a good reading through all of these instructions and I have a couple questions, a couple squabbles, if you will. So let's go over those. Okay, the first thing that stood out to me is that it says that it will take approximately two minutes for your espresso to drop after you start brewing. That is very concerning. Next thing is we will be using whole milk. Whole milk is the best for latte art and steaming. No arguments there. However, use whatever milk you like. I'm just, just saying. Okay, again, two minutes. However, this description says coffee. So I'm not totally sure what drink we're actually gonna be making. And then moving down here, it says when you're making your cappuccino, you start your coffee brewing. As soon as it drops, you switch the function to steaming, essentially stopping the coffee brewing to steam your milk. And then you move it back to brewing afterwards, rebrewing your coffee to finish out until you've reached the capacity you're looking for. This seems strange to me. I'm not totally sure if I am confirmed about what this means. So I went over to this little like picture book and, <laughs> and I gotta say, this is the most aggressive looking picture of someone leveling off a portafilter and I can't wait to do it myself. Uh, but yes, it says you brew and then you stop brewing to steam and then you go back to brewing afterwards and then you enjoy it with three exclamation points. So I think I have gleaned as much as I'm going to glean from these instructions. And I think it's just best for me to jump into it and test it out. So I went in with the four cup serving of water. I figured I'd use more rather than less because since I have full control over the brew time, I can just stop it at whatever amount I'd like. And if there's a little water left over in the machine, that seems fine to me. I also did not know what grind size to have this coffee at. There were no real guidelines. And since some of the recipes said coffee and some of it said espresso, I went kind of in the middle. I made this a good deal coarser than I would for my traditional home espresso machine. And I thought we'd just go for it. I'll also note that this machine did not come with a tamp. So I wasn't sure if I was actually supposed to tamp this coffee, but this was my guess. This flat bottom of the scoop is supposed to be used as a leveling tool and a tamp. That's my theory. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, I will also note that this also didn't give any instruction about the quantity of coffee to be used. It actually said you were supposed to use the proper amount. So I judged that as filling up the portafilter and then tamping it down. I'm also using my trusty little barista leak cup here. A lot of people asking me about it. It is limited edition and I don't think you can buy one right now. I'm very, very sorry. Now I slotted the portafilter in. It took a quick minute because this is very tricky to see underneath. And there we go. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's see if I actually did this kind of correctly on my first try. I do kind of like that the glass carafe nestles in there in one specific way. I think it's very cute. Like overall, you look at this little coffee setup just straight on and like, that's adorable. 
I also thought we'd time this. Let's find out if that two minute drop is actually gonna happen. So I turned on that brew function. You can't necessarily see it here super well, um, but that red light turns on and yep, about two minutes until the coffee drops. Now this feels sinful and sacrilegious, but I stopped the brewing to steam my milk. Um, and then once I was all done steaming my milk, I turned the brewing back on, which it hurts to say a little bit, but those were the instructions. And today we are following instructions and playing by the rules. If you'd like to see something truly ironic, you will notice that I'm using a Breville pitcher to steam the milk. That's uh, the only one I had clean and that's my excuse. Now I stopped the brewing at about the two serving mark because that looked like about the right amount of coffee that I wanted. Ooh, that's bubbly. And then I poured it in. And as you can see here, this this looks like drip coffee. This, this acts like drip coffee. This has the color of it, the texture of it, but the milk is looking pretty decent. So let's just kind of see what we can put together. We'll give it a taste and then we will readjust, make corrections, and actually give it a go with more information. Now, I was absolutely tickled that I have a tiny bit of latte art on there. However, I will say that it was very hard to incorporate the microfoam into my milk due to the fact that the steam wand didn't move. It was very hard to get that angle needed. So I was left with kind of a layer of microfoam and then a layer of hot milk underneath. Didn't taste bad in the latte. However, when I got to just drinking the coffee slash espresso beverage on its own, it was very clear that this was just a very under extracted, underdeveloped cup of coffee, which is about what I was expecting from the parameters, from what I kind of saw happening. So I thought we would give this another go. This next time around, I think I'm going to tighten up the grind, pull it more at what I would do for a traditional espresso. I'm also going to increase the dose and I'm also gonna be a little bit firmer with tamping. I think with all of those things, we might be able to get something slightly closer to espresso. So let's clean out our machine. Let's get all these parts out and let's try it again. I'm also gonna focus a little bit more on my milk and try to see if I can kind of manually swirl my milk around in the pitcher as to incorporate that microfoam throughout. Because honestly, the steam wand is not the worst thing ever. It's pretty nifty. If you're a beginner and not necessarily looking to make latte art, you can absolutely make it work. Just pay no heed to what's going on, on the screen. Just listen to my voice, ignore the spills. We're not gonna think about it. We're just gonna clean up our mess. We're gonna take in all of the things we just did. We're gonna make happy adjustments and we're just gonna get prepared for the best espresso of our life and not look at that very atrocious porta filter bed. Okay, all right, let's talk about this. So this is the first thing that happened. Very, very hot porta filter basket. Coffee would not come out, basket was falling out, very hot, very ouch, much pain. This is what I realized though. This is what this little tab here is for. This moment was the moment of realization. You're supposed to hold down this tab so the basket doesn't fly out when you're knocking out your puck. That is very smart and I like it. Considering this portafilter doesn't really have a lot of stability, that's brilliant. Okay. Moving back to it, as you can see, we have a much finer coffee grind here. This is the setting I would use on my Ranchilio Silvia Pro, if that is any reference for you. And I am just layering it in, layering and packing, layering and packing. Since I don't have a good way to tamp with the full pressure that I would prefer to, I just did multiple layers and kind of packed it down on every single layer. So I ended up with more coffee than I did in that original one. This also looks a wee bit cleaner. Those edges are a little rough, but we're not gonna talk about that. Get our coffee set up again I poured in again more water slotted in the porta filter and we are all ready to go we are timing it once again let's see if that drop time changes at all and kind of a little bit over two minutes so that's about a oh that's actually a 20 second drop time difference that's a lot by the way if, if you're not familiar with infusion pre-infusion extraction all that stuff that is a little scary but you know with this machine we're just gonna go with it so I have stopped my brewing I am steaming my milk now and focusing on swirling that milk around and now we're just gonna start the brewing again <laughs> it's so strange but it's kind of fun all right now that we are all done I'm actually going to transfer my milk into a separate pitcher again we're gonna just try to get the best milk texture possible if you've been following me for a while you know I think pitcher transferring is the way to go if you're trying to do latte art and here's our beverage pouring it in it's a little thicker it's a little bit more viscous it has some floaties on top which definitely aren't crema but it looks slightly more like espresso so that's kind of fun wait for it there it is that looks pretty good right like if you got that in a cafe you wouldn't be too mad at it like that's cute 
It's really cute. Um, the milk texture was a lot better this time. Um, picture transferring definitely helped because while I was able to get that micro foam on top initially, doing that picture, picture transfer, can't speak anymore, really, really helped solidify that kind of finer grade, you know, single texture milk all the way through. Flavor wise, it wasn't bad. It had a very, very nice mouthfeel. It had a good temperature, but I couldn't really taste the coffee. So it was time to give our little single beverage a try. But totally honest, didn't smell like much. And when I tasted it, it was acidic to all get out. Not delicious. The latte was pretty good, but again, I'm not really sure if this is an issue with the machine, with my recipe. It is probably all of the above if I'm being totally honest. However, we're gonna focus on the positive here. Let's ignore our coffee beverage and focus on the latte. As you can see, we have a really, really, really nice milk texture, a really lovely fine layer of microfoam on top, and there's not a lot of visible bubbles, which is surprising and fantastic. So let's clean up our mess, and I had one last thing to test out. I was still stuck on the fact that it took two minutes for the espresso to drop after you started the brew time and i was fascinated how much of that was time that the water actually was in contact with the coffee so i thought we would do kind of a dry slash wet water run this is just going to be water there is absolutely nothing in that portafilter and this is going to help show us how much time that water spends heating up in the water tank versus how much time it actually has contact with the espresso puck and the portafilter and that's going to have a lot to do with our flavor that is going to have to do with the extraction and that's going to explain whether i have a bad recipe slash parameters versus whether the espresso machine is just the way it is and it looks like it is just the way it is because water starts to drop at about 40 seconds which means we still have a minute and a half that is just infusion and extraction of water slowly seeping through that puck and possibly causing over or under extraction or a whole lot of things based on the variables of grind size of time of water temperature of all these things so do i think you should buy this espresso machine Maybe, if you want to. I personally think it's adorable and quirky and I feel quite endeared to it at this point in the day. But it's $30 and it does a heck of a lot for that amount of money and it does some good things and it does some bad things. So really the choice is up to you and I was just here to test it out. However, if you want some other ways, maybe some more sound ways to brew coffee, here are some of my recommendations. You have this, it's a December dripper. It's a type of pour over and it's delicious. You have a Vietnamese Finn coffee brewer. It's cute. It's something you might not have tried before and it's quite fascinating. And then you have the go-tos. You have the traditional mocha pot. It's tried and true and it's fantastic. And then my personal favorite, the French press. You can make coffee in this, you can make cold brew in it, you can even kind of steam milk in it and it's awesome. You can buy all of these things as well for under $30 and those are some fun options as well. Again, thank you to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video. Head down to my description to learn more and I will see you all next week. Check me out on TikTok and Instagram in the meantime.